Hey guys, it's Chris at Crypto Potato, and I've got a question for you. Are you a bit of a dummy when it comes to non-fungible tokens or NFTs? Don't worry, I was too. And that's why today we're going to talk about it and learn exactly what an NFT is. We're going to cover what non-fungible tokens are, what are the three features that make them so desirable, how do NFTs work and why do we need them, why celebrities like NFTs and who already interacted with them, why someone paid $69 million for an NFT and why he believes you should download a free copy of it, which projects are actively using NFTs and of course how to buy and transfer NFTs. But as always, before we get started, do me a favor and hit that like and subscribe button as honestly, it really means a lot to us. Now, for the past couple of months, non-fungible tokens or NFTs have been the hottest trend. Satoshi Nakamoto could not have predicted that the world would buy bored apes, punks, hash masks, celebrity songs, and other items when he created Bitcoin in 2009. He also couldn't imagine that Eminem and Steph Curry's profile picture would be an ape NFT. So let us start with the main question of what is a non-fungible token, NFT? Well, an NFT is a cryptographic token that uniquely identifies a certain item. It can track real world assets like a house or automobile, as well as digital assets like an image or a song. You might be wondering why non-fungible tokens are required to monitor assets in a unique manner. This is because regular ERC20 tokens have the problem of being divisible and interchangeable. What are the characteristics of non-fungible tokens? So we've already talked about how important non-fungibility is for NFTs. Now let's take a look at the uniqueness, rarity and indivisibility of NFTs, which are in fact the three features that make them so desirable. The significance of originality has already been highlighted by giving metadata that describes the asset and distinguishes it from other assets. NFTs enable you to define it uniquely. Just to make sure you understand, there will be 21 million Bitcoin units in total. If I want to give you a Bitcoin, do you care which Bitcoin I give you? Of course not. Each Bitcoin has the same value or price, but one NFT token represents something unique. It's not like another NFT. You also need to understand that NFT's popularity stems from their rarity, often known as scarcity. Token creators can define the token's boundaries with a standard ERC20 smart contract, which is based on Ethereum. Let's imagine you desire a 1 million token supply. That's conceivable. Are you interested in receiving extra tokens? Just raise your smart contract's total supply. Different algorithms put different rules on that possibility or prohibit it entirely. And finally, NFTs can't be separated. For example, you can own one complete Bitcoin. However, if you don't have enough money to buy a complete Bitcoin, you can split it into smaller amounts and buy a tenth of one, which you can't do with an NFT. How do non-fungible tokens work? As you may know, the second largest network after Bitcoin, Ethereum, saw the conception of the ERC721 smart contract standard, which allows developers to create unique assets. The ERC721 metadata contract is considerably fascinating for us because this is where the true magic happens. For the NFT we want to define, we can specify a name as well as a symbol. We must also give a URL and a JSON file describing the NFT's unique features. A JSON file is a type of data representation in which characteristics like name, description, and image URL are tracked to better define the NFT. If the last sentence sounds to you like Chinese, then you're not alone. This is exactly why there are NFT marketplaces like OpenSea that make this process a lot easier. We've written a comprehensive step-by-step -step guide on how to mint your first NFT on OpenSea and I'll put that link in the description down below. Why do we need non-fungible tokens? 
In the digital economy, NFTs are extremely useful. Many microeconomies exist within the gaming business. For example, consider titles like Counter-Strike, Global Offensive, League of Legends, or Fortnite Battle Royale. Each of these games has an in-game economy with tradable in-game assets. For winning a game, players are frequently rewarded with in-game assets such as an avatar skin or weapon stickers. In this case, players are eager to spend money in exchange for a gorgeous skin that would improve their gaming experience. Gamers, on the other hand, do not genuinely own these assets and the game can still manipulate the price of in-game assets or make changes to a skin's pricing, causing it to plummet. Now, let's talk about crypto projects that are actively using NFTs. NFTs have been used in several applications. Let's take a look at some of the most well-known projects that utilize this technology. Number one, CryptoKitties. Because CryptoKitties was the first use case of NFTs to reach mainstream media, it's impossible not to mention them. Its premise is similar to that of Pokemon Go. Instead of collecting Pokemons with distinct personalities, you can acquire digital crypto kitties with distinct personalities. You may produce new cats and so to uncover new qualities by breeding cats. Number two, Decentraland. Decentraland, on the other hand, is a virtual reality world where you can buy a piece of virtual land. You can expand your plot of land or construct structures on top of it in the game. The metadata of your NFT contains all of these details. The game also allows you to exchange virtual land with other players, allowing you to form big virtual communities. We talked about Decentraland in our play to earn video. Click in the link below to watch that one. And number three, Gods Unchained. Remember when you used to play Yu-Gi-Oh! and trade cards with your friends? To complete their collections, some collectors went so far as to sell cards on eBay or other online markets. Trading and collecting cards wasn't easy back then. Aside from the usage in games, some NFT series became very popular. Among them, we can mention the CryptoPunks. As you can see, the art here is a bit ancient from 2017. And of course, the Bored Apes Yacht Club. There are only 10K of them, and some of them became so popular that they're now sold for millions of dollars. Celebrities like Eminem and Steph Carey bought an ape and changed it to their profile picture on social media. Why would someone want to buy a Bored Ape? For the same reason that someone would like to buy a Rolex. You're a part of an exclusive club, or at least this is how they want you to feel. In this regard, a club can be around a famous figure just as any other merchandise. That's why many world-class celebrities seek their way into the NFT world. To mention some, Lionel Messi sold collectible cards, so has Shaquille O'Neal. Mariah Carey, Kings of Leon sold an NFT album. Ozzy Osbourne, Twitter's founder Jack Dorsey sold his first tweet, and the list it's just growing as we speak. If you wondered what is the highest price paid for an NFT, as of recording this video, Vignesh Sundarsan spent $69 million for an NFT of Be Please Every Days. Yes, $69 million for an NFT. And you might wonder, but this guy also encourages you to get your copy of the art and use it. Why? Because according to him, he wants information to be free. Now, the most important question, which you have all been wondering, how the hell do I buy NFTs? Okay, now that you know what NFTs are, let's look at where you can get them. To begin, there are a few well-known marketplaces that are experiencing a high surge in NFT traffic. Rarible is one of them, while OpenSea is currently the most popular marketplace worldwide. To purchase an NFT on OpenSea, you'll need to link an ERC721 compatible wallet, such as Metamask, which is a Google Chrome extension. 
you can also click on the link in the description for a full guide on how to buy an NFT and even how to sell your own NFT, a process which is more known by the term minting. You can purchase the NFT at its current market price, but before you do that, you must however make an offer if you wish to participate in the auction. Then your account will be debited and you'll receive the NFT in exchange for the ETH if your offer is accepted. In the end, the value of the NFT, like any collectible item, is determined by how much money one is willing to spend for it. The object's value isn't inherited in it, rather it's ascribed by individuals who think it's valuable. Finally note, NFTs have acquired a lot of attention and popularity in recent years because they serve as proof of ownership and validity for both digital and physical things. Furthermore, NFTs enable users to transfer ownership without fear of fraud. Now, that's about all there is to know when it comes to NFTs. And the good news is, you're no longer going to look like a dummy in front of your friends. If you've enjoyed this video, then don't forget to like and subscribe in order to stay updated with more crypto news from Crypto Potato. Thanks for watching and I hope to see you next time.